only show that's three dimensions away from the Haunted Mansion having a sequel, The Party Mansion. I'm your host, 3D Jake, and today we're looking at The Haunted Mansion, released in 2023. The Haunted Mansion is directed by Justin Samin and is written by Kate Dippolode, who also wrote the 2016 Ghostbusters, and stars Lakeith Stanfield, Owen Wilson, Rosario Dawson, Tiffany Haddish, Danny DeVito, Jared Leto, and Jamie Lee Curtis. The movie's essentially about a tour, a, guy, a ghost tour guide who basically is talked into going into a haunted mansion and taking photo flash photography of the mansion using a NASA, a NASA camera he built. And basically, he's being paid $2,000 to do it, but it finds out the host house actually is haunted. He has to help the family living there to get rid of the ghost along with a priest, a professor, and a, and a what's her name called? What's, I forget what she's called again. A clairvoyant, I guess, you know? And so basically, of course, th this movie is a remake of The Ride, of course. I know there, this is not a remake of the Eddie Murphy movie, although you could, I guess, consider this a remake of the Eddie Murphy movie, even though it's not really a remake of the Eddie Murphy movie. I really enjoy the Eddie Murphy movie. In fact, I, you know, remember just re-watching it over and over again, that movie, and I always cherish that movie, and I still love that movie. Um, and I will always watch it around Halloween time. But this movie, I really enjoyed this movie. I was expecting not to like it because I've been hearing negative things about it the whole time. But I don't know what movie they saw because I went in this movie expecting to be bad. And I'm like, oh my god, this is actually really good. Like, I was sitting there the whole time like, you know, like, I like this movie. You know, like, Dallas I thought was okay. But this one was actually really good. This might be my favorite movie of the summer because... It's really good. Like, I'm like, this is really good. Like, I enjoyed everybody in the movie. Everything in the movie felt like it was placed. And I know some people say, oh, you could have cut 30 minutes out of this movie. I didn't see it that way. I'm like, I actually enjoyed it. I felt like it had an even pace. I felt like it had an even structure. I felt like everything in the movie needed to be what it needed to be. And I'm curious to see what deleted scenes that would have fit into the story. Because, I mean, there are some things that I wish they would have done differently. But it was still a great movie. Like, like I really like the acting in the movie. The acting is one thing that I really thought would work well. Like, everybody in the movie, Lakeith Stanfield, Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson is so funny. And I've heard people compare him to be like, oh, he's like his character in Wedding Crashers. And he kind of is. He's like a PG-13 version of that character from Wedding Crashers. He's really good in the movie. I mean, he is so good. Like, literally, like, there's some funny moments, especially in spoilers, if you haven't seen the movie. But, like, there's a moment whenever he's, like, you know, whenever he's talking about let's do a prayer, he's doing, like, a football huddle. He's like, like, he goes, all right. And he said, prayers on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm just like, what? <laughs> a priest does that. Or he's like, you know, he's like, or whenever he's like, you know, like, uh, I'm going to take the couch, you know, tonight. And he's like, <laughs> you know, got a bad back. And I'm like, come on. You know, or, you know, he's just like, just stuff like that where he's like, you know, just like, this man is a priest, really? <laughs> like, it's just like, or he's like, we're going to kill these ghosts with an axe. Goes, and Tiffany has like, they're already dead. They're going to be deader. He's like, you know, just, Owen Wilson's fantastic. And Lake of Stanfield is like the straight man in the movie where he's the, you know, and so basically he's like, you know, the guy that's, you know, when I say straight man, I mean, you know, the leading man, you know, that's like the tough guy that's like, you know, there. Like when he goes there, you know, he basically is not, it's like a swindler in a way where he just goes there to like, you know, because he doesn't believe in ghosts. He's just like, click, click, click. In which they did, they know that he's, you know, like that he's just not clicking the pictures. So when he goes click, 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 and then he gets the 2000, he comes back because they're like, Oh, Ghost followed you home, didn't it? Yeah. Yes, and now you believe. And he goes, yeah. yeah. And so he has to basically be the unwilling hero to basically, you know, help them out. And I'm like, that was so clever. You know, and it's just the ghost that followed him home is just a fisherman that likes to watch Deadliest Catch that wants to go out to the sea. Um, you know, the, and Dane DeVito plays like this guy. I mean, I'm not a big fan of his character, but I do like, there's some moments I'm going to talk about in a minute. But I also think that, you know, it's nice to see Dane DeVito in the movie. He's a great actor, and I like him as an actor. Um... I think Tiffany Haddish is like this, is like trying to be like a funny comedic relief where she's like this clairvoyant who basically is like, you know, um, you know, like a, like a, also a swindler, you know, goes, lives on, that's on Bourbon Street where they come and they bring her to the mansion and then she finds like, like two hours later and she has a ghost and stuff. And all of them, like, every time they leave the mansion and when they step in, they have a ghost with them. And so basically it's like if you leave the mansion and you step foot in the mansion and you then you leave a ghost will follow you and so you have to like that so and so it's kind of funny that they'll have to all sleep in this one living room i'm like i was sitting there telling i wanted to watch the movie with my aunt and i told my aunt i was like they wouldn't get more i would at least go get some more furniture at least i mean come on like 
You know, because that's the only place, I guess, the living room's the only place where it doesn't, the haunted stuff happen, at, you know. Um, I also like, you know, the story. The story's really well done. Um, you know, I like that, you know, it's like all these people are kind of swindlers, and then they're just, like, stuck in this position where they have to actually be these people they're posing to be because that's the only way they can stop the ghost in this house. And I think that's really clever because usually, like, when people are pretending to be who they are, they have to change their profession up and just be unwilling heroes. But this one's like, no, you're even though you're a swindler clairvoyant, you have to actually be a clairvoyant. All, even though you're a swindler priest, you actually have to do a, a godly thing. Even though you are, you know, like he says, even though basically you're a tour guide, a ghost that you don't believe in this stuff, you actually have to help defeat the ghost. You know, you have to be there. And, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just really things I like about this movie that I really think that really add more to the story. Especially, I like the, you know, um, you know, the villain also played by Jared Leto, who is basically like, you know, this. I, I thought he had a great backstory about how he was just like a rich guy who basically... Uh, was, you know, make, killed the servants and everything, and then they end up turning on him and decapitating him and everything, and you had to bury his head, and I thought that was a really well-done backstory, and how he haunts this mansion, because this guy, you know, I think it was Gracie, lost his wife, and so he was basically getting Jamie Lee Curtis to just pray and pray, until eventually, you know, Jared Leto's, you know, ghostly figure showed up, and then he haunts the mansion, all the ghosts are afraid of him. I thought that was a great story, and it really plays more into the story. Um, I really like that. The directing is also really well done. I, was, I don't know who this guy, Justin Cement, but he's a really well the movie, well shot, well directed, well acted. Props to him because for a director, I don't know if he's a first time director. If he is, this is a well done first time director. I mean, I think, honestly, I feel bad that this movie's not doing as well because, you know, this movie's a Halloween movie that should, it was released in the summer. And I just think, man, it's so good and it should not be getting this bad reception because of like how good this is actually a really good film i really enjoyed this movie and i also enjoy the there's uh, some cameos in the movie but i thought even though i have some issues with some of the cameos like it's just like winona ryder has a cameo in it where she plays like uh she's torn they're torn jared leto's mansion and she basically because they need to steal something to, to get rid of his spirit and like oh what about this cane and she goes is that his cane and it goes, you know, Owen Wilson and Lake of Stanfield go in there. Like, is that his cane? And they're like, no, that's my cane. You know, I have, he says, I have leg issues. Thank you very much. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> like, you know, and then like, is this his? No, that's a replica. And I'm like, why do you keep it behind glass? And he's like, do you want to do the tour? <laughs> I'm just like, it's just, that was something I really liked. Um, I thought she was really funny in that cameo. And I was like, and also it has a creepy feel to it. Like every time you're in the mansion, especially there's a scene where he's in the basement to look for like uh you know madam madam Ma madam the crystal ball jamie lee curtis says i think it's madam clouseau or madam Rousseau. but he's looking for J jamie lee curtis's character is it a crystal ball and basically he basically looking for it, but then you see there's a ghost and there's pictures that follow and there's like a bride that's there and tries to kill him it's so great well done scene and also there's pictures that try to follow him everywhere i mean it's just it, it's really great and it feels creepy just that scene um, you know, Danny DeVito is also, there's a possessed scene in the movie where he's possessed by Jared Leto's character. That scene, I really works done. You could tell, though, he's possessed because he's starting to say, like, they went to the dollar store for some, you know, for some good old-fashioned licorice, you know, <laughs> taffies. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you could tell a, a normal person would not say that, you know. And, you know, I like how Danny DeVito rushes into the house and gets <laughs> taken out by, a, like, a little thing. Like, you really, like, share knocks him out, just like it knocks out Tiffany Haddish. Talks him out until he gets hit by a truck, and then they have to go to the hospital. <laughs> and then the ghosts are there haunting the hospital and knocking the bed machine. It's so hilarious. I also like that. And also, there's a, you know, the, the seance scene is really great, too, you know, where, like, the seance, where it brings, uh, you know, where he's there, sees the ghost, and the ghost is haunting him. And he has to get there. It reminded me of the scene from the Insidious where the like they're going to get Dalton. Like they're doing like you know sitting around a table trying to hear, hear my voice, Dalton. Hear my voice. It reminded me of that a lot. Uh, you know, just just kind of play, but this felt like a toned down version. And also the fisherman's ghost, you know, was pretty great. Whenever he at the end he knocks over a fisherman, steals the boat, says he wanted to go to water. You know, like you know because he's just sitting there at, when they're at Jared Leto's mansion. The fisherman's just sitting there in the chair watching Deadliest Catch on the TV. I thought it was pretty funny. And the police sketch scene where they're trying to get the police sketch and like, you were mugged by 
this guy is a skeleton, and like, you know, a picture of Joe as a skeleton, he goes, yeah, it's great, can you add flesh to that, you know, I thought that was great too, you know, th those were the things I really loved about the movie, um, there are things I don't like, like the CGI on the ghost, okay, for instance, the, especially the bride scene with the bride with the axe reminds me of the ghost from Ghostbusters 2016. A lot of the ghosts remind me of the ghost from Ghostbusters 2016, and I'm just like, you know, I, I should remind me of that. It should remind me of they should be their own thing and not have to remind me of something like that. Also, um, it, you know, the CGI kind of feels outdated, especially like now we have like Avatar and all this stuff. Like the CGI, like especially there's a scene with Jamie Lee Curtis in a crystal ball. And Jennifer Tilly's CGI from her in a crystal bar looks more real than Jamie Lee Curtis from 2023 movie. And that is because, and I'm not trying to blame, but the CGI does not look great in some scenes, especially with the ghost. When it, but when it comes mostly to the ghost and stuff, like especially Jared Leto's character, just looks like a cartoon. It doesn't look like a real person. And I was not scared at all, especially when he has the little head in the ball. So I'm, like, I'm like the button, you know, the hat box guy. I'm like, it does not scare me at all. I'm just like, just, I'm like okay. Yeah, I think it's because mainly the the CGI artists are being pushed. You know, they got used to they used to have like a, a couple of like you know like fifty projects. Now they got over a thousand projects to do, and you know, so now it's like they're getting overworked. So it's like, look, we can't do top tier work. We just have to do what we can, and then just hope it. You know, so it's unless they unless we start doing practical again, we're gonna get a lot of mediocre movies. You know, with CGI, well, at least movies with, that are good but with mediocre CGI. So unfortunately. Um, um, Danny DeVito also kind of was like, cause he just felt like he was trying to be funny as well. Like, oh, he's like, oh, he's the old guy that's like the klutz in the movie, and he's like, oh, look, it's so funny. You know, it just feels like he's there. I feel like they could have wrote his character out and give some stuff to Owen Wilson or Tiffany Haddish, and it would have been just fine. Like, we don't really need him in there, but I feel like we needed one more person in there, so that's probably why they did it. Because, but I did like the scene with him possessed, so I will give it that. But I feel like they didn't really need Danny DeVito in there. I feel like they just did it because they needed one more role to fill. Um, the kid's outfit and we also kind of bugged me because I'm like, this kid's dressed like a kid from 1952. And I'm like, you're telling me a kid dresses like that? I mean, you could say, well, it's the young Sheldon argument where, you know, young Sheldon dresses like that. But I'm like, come on, like, no kid would dress like that. Even if they were, like, you know, a control freak, they would not dress like that. I just thought that was kind of, like, kind of BS on it. Now, if this movie was set in the 50s, I would believe that. But no, no kid dresses like that in 2023. Um, you know... It could, it could be more funnier. Like, it could have just been, like... It could have been funny. Like, really more fun. I had a few more jokes in the movie. Like, there was a joke at the beginning where it's like, Oh, he said, My name's Carol. Your name is Carol. And then, like, Lake of Stables says, Oh, well, he said, Oh, because girls are common name. <laughs> like, you know, and just like that made me kind of chuckle. But I'm like, Oh, it would have been so more funny if it would have been like... <laughs> like, My name's Carol. Your name's Carol. And like... Well, at least your name's not Karen. Like <laughs> that would have made me chuckle, but you know, but that. But I still like chuckle from there. But I'm like, I wish they would kept adding jokes in the movie, like just sprinkling them through. But instead, you know, like the joke. There are some jokes, but they come like you know, they're not many. But I just kind of wish it a little bit more funnier. But that's just me, um, you know. And there are, you know, there's no talking statues also in the movie, by the way. You know, like, there's no talking statues at all. You do hear songs from the talking statues throughout the movie, but you don't see the talking statues at all because it's just, they just play, I guess, talking statue songs, but they don't show them. And I'm like, what? Come on, really? I was expecting to see talking statues, especially in the graveyard. When they go to the graveyard, you don't see no talking statues. And that kind of bummed me out. You do see a, a statue, but it's not talking. You know, that kind of bummed me out a little bit. Um, also, Daniel Levy has a cameo in the movie, and he just is there like he's just there for like oh i'm gonna do like a scavenger hunt thing and a murder mystery party he just just shows up has one line and then like there he's just and then that's it really just i'm like why is he even there like you know it's just you have daniel levy in this movie and you just use you he's useless in this movie I'm like, come on you know so at least renato i had two jokes in the movie this one is just he's just there to like you know entertain guests while they're looking for you know the hat and I'm just, that kind of maybe irked me. Because I'm like, come on, he's such a good actor. Why? But I did enjoy this movie. I plan, the only thing is, I really wish they would have released it during October so that way we could get the Halloween feel. Because this is a Halloween movie that deserves to be watched. And I guarantee when it hits Disney Plus, it's going to be watched a lot. Especially around the Halloween time every year. I'm definitely going to check it out every year around Halloween time. If I had to give this movie a grade, I would give it a solid A-. minus. Thank you.